Hello lovely people. Today we are going to talk about blockchain. I so wanted to present this video last week but um, it just didn't happen and um, I didn't want to come back uh, when I was not well and um, make a video. So I took my time and um, here I am today sharing this video with you all. So we are going to talk about blockchain but uh, before we look at actually what blockchain is and uh, well before that I must say that this is not a technical video in terms we are not going to get into the implementation part of blockchain or cryptocurrency it's more of an uh, conceptual level discussion where uh, I'm just sharing what I have learned about it because it's a buzzword right now and uh, everybody is talking about blockchain uh, wherever you go any institute they all are talking about blockchain right now so it makes me curious about understanding what blockchain is and why it's such a buzz right now and uh, maybe by sharing this video I could reach out to more people and share the understanding of what blockchain is so before we uh, talk about or understand what blockchain is we need to look at why we need something like blockchain right so you might have heard about cryptocurrency so i'm gonna name it a much simpler way and i would call it e-currency or e-money right just for the heck of understanding so let's suppose you had the capability to auto generate e-money just like your email like you would send an email to your friend jackson and uh, that one email could be one dollar and uh, there is no one to kind of monitor it and um, look at your balance or keep a track of how much e-money you're spending or gaining so there is no such uh, authority to monitor it given that you will be kind of in a situation where you could generate more e-money just like your email that you sent to your friend Jackson you could send that email to 20 other people and uh, eventually you would spend $20 whereas you just started with $1 and because nobody's tracking it there is no way to figure out how you got that money right so it would become an infinite inflatable money which will lose its value because anybody could generate money at their will and share it and then suddenly that money would be so much that it will lose its importance and there would be no value for it for a purchasing capacity right so you need an authority a consortium or a body that would kind of maintain a ledger which would or a register which would kind of maintain or track your spendings your income uh, if you're giving loan to anyone it needs to maintain that so that at any given point of time people know how much money you have right so that is your spending capacity so if you don't have one dollar how can you spend one dollar right so in order to have that available information available to everybody you need a ledger a register where it is written now coming back to the need so this register or this tracking this whole uh, mechanism of keeping or managing the e-money or cryptocurrency is called blockchain right so blockchain is something more like a ledger where entries are made of your transactions with a timestamp right now you'd come up and say if it's a ledger why not just call it a ledger and why call it a blockchain why such a fancy name well we'll get to that and understand why it's called as blockchain but first let's look at what it 
is actually so we understand we now understand that it's required to manage or track the transactions that anybody does using cryptocurrency in a network right so <clears throat> let's suppose today you want to send about ten dollars of your money to someone in a different country let's say from india you are sending it to australia so can you send it like log on to your bank and just transfer no but you need a third party who could do the transfer for you right and there is inclu included of fees a service charge will be there to transfer that money from india to australia from a to b and then there is little time required approximately one to three days is required to make that transaction happen right now this third party definitely brings in security and other measures to keep your money safe but there is a service charge and there is delay of transaction so what blockchain does is tries to solve these two problem it tries to remove a third party from in between and it reduces the service charge how it does so as I said it's in a network so it will be defined that there is a huge network where people are accepting a certain kind of cryptocurrency so they will have ledgers they will have registers which will kind of maintain the entry so let's say we have four parties who are maintaining a network and they have a certain kind of a cryptocurrency with which they are going to transact so at a given point of time party a decides to send five dollars to party b so what happens at this point is party a would make that transaction a sends money to b and that is five dollars right and the very next second b thought thinks of uh, sending about three dollars to c so there will be another entry in the ledger b sending money to c three dollars and both these transactions will be linked to each other right now at this point if a let's say a started with ten dollars only and it has already sent five dollars to b now a dollar tries to send around seven dollars to d right so at this point d has the visibility of the ledger or b and c also has a visibility of this ledger and hence this transaction would become invalid by they would come complain that you don't have seven dollars in your account right now so you cannot seven send seven dollars you could rather send five dollars because all you have now is five dollars so that's the benefit of having a central ledger and this is how the transaction would happen but then again it's a central ledger which would kind of bring in its own challenges such as one point of failure hence came the plan of having distributed ledgers right so instead of having one ledger there will be certain parties within the network or certain nodes within the network which will hold a copy of the ledger right now these specialized nodes are called as miners m i n e r s so these are the guys who have the authority to make updates on the ledger right so in the blockchain techno method not everybody will have authority to update the ledger now when i'm saying update the ledger they're not updating and in the sense that overriding the values for each account they are basically maintaining a time stamps entries one after the other in that register and hence you see each transaction would be a block so one transaction second transaction third transaction and they all will be linked to each other hence the name blockchain right each transaction is called as block and they are linked to the other transaction and hence they are called as blockchain now we understand that in a network we'll have certain nodes designated as the nodes who could make updates on the ledger and these are called as miners 
Now you would question that let's say at 1045 there is an entry and there are five nodes who are minors so whose update is valid and let's say all five go ahead and make an update in their ledgers how would they maintain a single copy or maintain the correct transaction around all the nodes well that comes from something called as consensus so what they have to do is they have to come up with an agreement that a certain transaction is only the right transaction how does that happen what it does internally is that each of these miners they kind of uh, compete against each other to get the authority to make an update in their ledger so each of these miners will have their own copy of ledger but they cannot make an update unless they have the authority now in order to get that authority they need to solve a math problem now when do they do it so let's suppose a has to send again five dollars to b so what happens is a would broadcast it in the network saying i am sending five dollars to b now this transaction is broadcasted on the network as an unvalidated transaction now at this point all the miners would get alerted and they would pick up that transaction <coughs> and then they will start solving a math problem to get a key so there will be an algorithm there will be a, a problem that they have to solve with using their computing power so whichever miner solves the problem first to come up with a key gets to validate the transaction so they get so one of the miner kind of does it maybe a millisecond first that gets the authority to pick up the transaction add a key to it and update its register once it updates its register then this miner is going to publish this same transaction a to b five dollars into the network and along with that it will send a key as well saying it's a validated transaction now at this point all the miners would take a moment to kind of absorb that and update that in their ledgers so at this point one of the miner has solved the problem updated its ledger and broadcasted in the network saying transaction is validated and given a key all the miners go ahead and update their ledgers and hence all the ledgers within the network gets updated with the accurate or the correct transaction maintaining a sanctity and that's how they come to consensus that everybody agrees to that transaction and after the transaction is committed to all the ledgers they all go back and look out for the next transaction and then again compete right now you ask me what kind of math problem well it's a math problem and it's an algorithm you can look at the code but <clears throat> what happens is the intensity or the complexity of this math problem increases with the number of miners if they increase in the network so if you have a thousand computers or thousand users in that network and let's say 500 are the miners and tomorrow if it increases to 600 or 700 miners then the math complexity of math problem is going to increase because more miners are competing and uh, hence it needs a much more difficult problem to solve so that's how they would solve the problem update the transactions each of the miners take the responsibility of making those updates in their ledgers and hence the ledger is updated now this ledger is visible to everybody in the network hence everybody knows who has how much of cryptocurrency at any point of time and hence the transactions are all going to be correct in the sense that nobody's going to inflate their uh, monetary power such as in the beginning as i said i sent one email which was one dollar and i could for re-forward that 10 times to make it ten dollars that may not that will not happen because everything is validated and everybody knows how much i have and hence you don't need a third party in between all you need is a ledger and the ledger is maintained within the network with some other special nodes and these nodes now you would also ask me a question why do these nodes kind of designate themselves as a miner and use their computing power what is their benefit right so remember we had a service charge for the third party similarly you'll have a fraction of uh, 
cryptocurrency will be given to each of these miners whoever wins the uh, competition to update the ledger so every time a miner updates their own ledger by winning the math problem they get a fraction of uh, cryptocurrency as a fee and that would be the reason why a node would designate itself as a miner the only requirement is that the miner needs to have an additional computing power so that they can solve the math problem now this concept of uh, having a ledger and updating it maintaining account of everybody in the network and updating it with timestamp uh, whenever the transaction happens is blockchain that's simple now as of today uh, we are looking at blockchain technology or the algorithm within the uh, realm of cryptocurrency but this whole concept can be used in various other areas which are being discussed and uh, well sky is the limit i think it's going to be very beneficial to see how it kind of moves towards in future and interestingly yesterday i found an article while reading the newspaper that facebook is running a project uh, with about 100 other organizations to come up with its own cryptocurrency and a blockchain uh, method uh, so again let's stay tuned to see how facebook has to operate on in this arena so thank you so much for joining in today we'll connect again next week have a great week bye bye